Well, all right. Right. Welcome back to As It Should, Paul Bertolino here in the world famous As It Should Be studios. Yeah. As if you didn't know, but I bet you didn't know this. I have Christopher Durant right here. Hi. Christopher Durant. Hi. Yeah. Hi. We also have Tommy Von Boyd. Hi. Hi. Yeah, you probably knew. Hi. You probably Hi. knew. Whatever. I'm underestimating you. But <laughs> we do have the 80s really go. We're going in yeah. deep. We're going in deep here. Yeah. We're getting we're 1984. 80s. This is what? the 1967 of the 80s. Eight, the 1977 eight. of the 80s. Living in the it's, 80s. Uh, yes. Only not as good. But. I. Spicy. Oh, wait. Comes right out of the gate. I'm dropping my that's, tie a, that's a spicy right, right out there. of the gate. Spicy. Yep. No good. Okay. Nope. All Expect right. it. Okay. All right. Anyway, we are going to be discussing uh, our favorite albums of 1984. Did I say that yet? You're damn well, right we are. Yes, we are. Yep. Okay. For everybody who's been paying attention, you knew that also. Uh, yeah. But what you didn't know mm. is is that I get to start this one. Oh. oh I get the last word. Yeah. All right. Oh yeah. And yeah. I get a sip of coffee. Okay. It gets me going. <laughs> All right. Coffee. All right, All right so we're, let's we're see. plum out of Coke. Get us off on the wrong <laughs> foot here, Paul. Go ahead. All right. All right. All right. All right. All right. <laughs> So I have this is gonna be good. some tolerable no honorable mentions. Oh, oh, no, I have honorable mentions here. Oh, 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 honorable oh, oh, mentions. Oh, oh. And uh, well, that would be oh, spicy. <laughs> Kiss Animalize. Oh, this is where I got back on with Kiss. Remember, I talked uh, talked on the '83 episode, the last episode, about how I kind of yeah. got off with them and I didn't do lick it up. But for some reason. For good Animal, reason. And for some reason, Animalize, I came back. Yeah, well, that's okay. that's the one that won you back. Interesting. Well, right. it didn't that win me back because I heard the album and thought it was so great. It just, I think, I just hit that moment where I was like, ah, oh, fuck it, I'll buy this one. Okay. You know, I think uh, Heaven's on Fire was on MTV, and I think I liked it, and I was like, you know, because I will say, when Lick It Up came out, and I and I told the story in the last episode about seeing the album in the record store, I didn't realize this was like a new rebirth for them. It looked to me at the time before that album took hold like it was a last gasp. I thought, oh man, this is like, this is the Oliver, Cousin Oliver comes into the Brady Bunch <laughs> moment for kids. That's what I, how I perceived oh, no. it, you know? Wow. And then oh, by the time Animalize hit, it's like, oh no, this is happening. Like, they're, <laughs> it's a thing. This is a thing. Damn. So, anyway, Damn. Steve Ray Vaughn with Couldn't Stand the Weather, second Steve Ray Vaughn album. Ramones, Too Tough to Die, a really underrated. 80s album, I think. I really, I, I like that one. It's way the fuck better than Pleasant Dreams, that's for sure. Oh, Pleasant Dreams. Oh, God. <clears throat> I didn't. Tommy disagrees, that. but. I do disagree. I don't like Too Tough to Die. Everyone's like, oh, it's a return to form. I, I thought it well, was. Well, I don't think it's as good as their older albums. I wouldn't call it a return to form in the sense that I don't think it's like their other records. I just think it's a good record. Mm. But. Hmm. Our buddy Tatsuro Yamashita yeah. with the great Big Wave soundtrack. Excellent. If you know, you know. And if you do know, let me know in the, in the comments because I want to know if there's one or two of you. All right. <laughs> and maybe I'll put <laughs> one or two. the name right here so you even know what I'm talking about. That's the name right there. Okay. All right. Watch him forget to put the name. <laughs> I, I might. I just might. I just might. I just might. <laughs> maybe. Red Cross with teammates from Monsanto. Yes, Red Cross. Yes, Red Cross have entered the building. Wow. Wow. 84. Well, they put out their first record in 19... right? The first album came out in 81. One. Oh, yeah, that's right. Yeah, and the first EP came out in 80. Oh, shit. I can't... Steve, Steve, the bassist, was like 11 or 12 when they started. When they first... That's so Like, literally paid for their first demo with his paper route. I mean, I don't know if you're fucking with me or not. I'm not. No, no, no. I'm absolutely telling you the truth. That is absolutely the truth. Are you, are you Everything seriously? I'm telling yes. you is exactly dead, the truth. As the kids say, yes. dead ass. Yes. Wow. Okay. Yeah. They yes. don't, they're not respect. fucking around. They were yeah, not yeah. fucking around. Not at all. Yes. Much respect, Red Cross. Yeah. From from Hawthorne, California, the home of the Beach Boys, yeah. Red Cross. That's Hawthorne, California has this thing about producing brother bands. But, um, <laughs> all right. And my last honorable mention, Defenders of the Faith by Judas Priest. Mm. Ah, yo. Which I which I bought on on day of release. I couldn't. That was the first Priest album. That, actually, that's the only uh, Beach or Beach Boys. That's the only Judas Priest album uh, I only... bought on day of release because the next one is amazing. <clears throat> Turbo. We won't discuss we'll Turbo. We will later. discuss Turbo. Yes, it's amazing how terrible it is. But we will go on to my top ten here. My number ten. My number ten. Number ten. I, I kind of was thinking of maybe I should put Judas Priest on over this one, but in the end, fuck it. Then let me show it. Power Slave, oh, Iron Maiden. Oh, 
Oh. Now, this is an album I bought day of release. I remember yeah. buying this. Woo! Mm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Man, this album. Mm-hmm. I And the people rejoiced. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, well, back in those days, <laughs> I, I used to go to the record stores. Well, I always go to the record stores all the time, but I had kind of a regular round where I knew all the people who were working at the stores and I would chat up the people at the uh, at the counters and things. A lot of it was high school kids and some of them were like people in their 20s or whatever. And I had a report with them, so report with them so I could get promo posters. Oh, so I cool. got the promo poster for Power Slave, which I don't have anymore unfortunately, but that shit was a giant square poster like it, it would be our entire backdrop. Oh, a, wow. It was a po- it would that whole wall in front of you, it would take up that whole wall. That's badass. Of the, of the cover of this. Damn. <gasps> yeah. Don't have it anymore. Oh, boy. Imagine what I could get on eBay for that now. A ton of money. But then you'd have to ship it. I mean, like, it's literally, like, as a roll, it would be, like, this oh, wow. big. Okay, so number nine. Number nine. <laughs> Stay hungry. Oh. TFS. Twisted fucking sister. Oh my god. Yeah. This record. Uh, this is actually a promo slick. Oh. This isn't actually the album cover. It's called a flat. It's a flat promo slick, whatever. But yeah, flat. Mm hmm. That's what we called them a tower. Yeah. And uh, one, one of those items that I was getting from. from my friends at the record stores. Yeah, I was getting I was getting posters for fucking every album back then, and a lot of them I don't have now, unfortunately. Wow. But uh, now that album, you know, on the last episode I talked about you can't stop rock and roll and how I really, really was so heavily into Twisted Sister before that record came out. When Stay Hungry came out, I was really heavily into them still, but I didn't like the album as much. I don't oh. think I really realized it till later. But after the dust settled, it's like. Um, it's, it's no, you can't stop rock and roll. But you know, I would love to hear that album as produced. Like you can't stop rock and roll. That I would like to hear. Well, I mean, they did attempt to do their re-recorded version of it. Still hungry. It is a terrible. Hell. Well, it's not because hell, of the approach. Yeah, it's it's just, because they did it when they were like fucking sixty. Yes. That, that that's Ouch. why. You know. <laughs> oh, well, it also it and just, they, they, they had to tune down. They tune shit. down. It's like, and yeah, it sounds on. tired. Oh, yeah. And it just and they tried to make it sound too modern. And yada, yeah. Yada, 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 if, yada, if they had yada, done yada. it in '84, they could like just, they did. You can't stop rock and roll. That, that would have be been better off thing. just remixing the damn thing. Honestly, maybe add some. Maybe change some of the instrumentation, but leave the bulk of what was there there. Maybe the same performances, but yeah, yeah. But oh well. Why did they do the new one when they were older? They claimed that they were never happy with the way Stay Hungry sounded, and that oh. they didn't get along with Tom Werman, and it was a whole thing. And then I think what it really comes down to is when they did the reissues of all their albums, they did every album except for that one, and I think it's because they couldn't get the rights they, back. At, that it. is exactly it. That's why they can't oh. fuck with it now. Yes, Atlantic. Oh, really? That's the one album they can't get their claws on, yeah. and they can't fuck with. Oh, and um, Swifties so they had to they attention. had to re-record it in order to fuck with it. Okay, um, and I do know that they weren't even really totally on board with making that record the way they made it. Uh, Dee Snyder was talking about uh, in the in the documentary about how when they went in to do this, they said, "Okay, we've decided you're going to be it the next time, the next album. We're going to push you. You're going to this is this is your moment. But this is what you got to do." And he's like, oh, no, 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 that's not what we do. And said, well, they said, well. Take it or leave yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, take it or leave it. You know, well, we don't want to leave behind our, our main fans. Yeah, but how many fans do you estimate you have? Oh, blah, 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 blah. Yeah, but what about all these people? What do you want? And he went, deep breath, fuck it, let's do this. And then he says, looking back on it, he said, well, you know, I want both. Right. I want to. I want to get these people, but the way I want to get them. Yeah. And but he kind of at the time they had gone through so much shit to get to where they were. He just went, I surrender. Right. Well, because they had been scrapping for so many years. So many years. Yeah. I don't want to belabor the twisted sister conversation. But we are if, talking a long time yeah, about it. But before we move on, just I, I, as maybe people don't realize, I am also a huge fan of Twisted Sister. Yeah. Paul and I both love Twisted Sister. Yeah. Um, and I have a lot of respect for what those guys. Did to get to where they got, but when D says something like that, my response, my, my my initial reaction is like, okay, well, what record did you want to make then? What about Stay Hungry? Do you feel is somehow beneath you or not? What you well, I don't to think do? he feels like it's beneath him. I think it's just a little slicker. I think he probably would have wanted to make. I think he would have wanted to make the record that I would have liked to have them to have made, which would be the next album after You Can't Stop Rock and Roll, and not the first MTV album. I... 
you know. Aside from a couple of, of really polished radio hit, radio friendly songs, I mean, the bulk of the record is kind of uncompromising. Fast and heavy stuff. I mean, I don't know. But anyway, there's we can, just we something can about on. it. There's yeah. just something about There's some sort of gloss that almost you can't really point at that I just feel. To be honest with you, I think it comes down to the mix. I really do. It could it could be that. I think it is, yeah. Maybe. But anyway. Yeah. Brought to you today by Twisted Sister. There you go. All right, so after half an hour, I'm going to move on to my number eight. <laughs> Joe Jackson with Body and Soul. All right. Um... Which I don't know. Do I want the? Yeah, yeah. I put that over to his sister. But yeah, the body, body and souls is a follow up to Night and Day. Not as good as Night and Day, but still great. Number seven, an album that almost didn't make the list. I almost forgot about it until like a couple days ago. Oh. But it would have been a glaring omission. This is Spinal Tap. The Spinal oh, Tap soundtrack. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yes. Yeah. yeah, I mean, yeah. I didn't even, like, I literally just <laughs> I popped into my head yesterday, that. like, holy shit, how could I have not put this on the list? I totally forgot about that. Wait. Yeah. Wowie zowie. Okay, yeah. I didn't forget it. Okay, good. <laughs> okay. Well, <laughs> right now, I forgot Spoiler it. Alert. Spoiler alert. I forgot. Okay, so number six, an album you probably didn't see coming. And mm-hmm. I only in the last year or so, the last couple years maybe, have realized, oh, yeah, I really like this album. Uh-oh. Didn't give a shit about it at the time. Love it now. Learning to Crawl by The Pretenders. Really? Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. Hmm. Am, 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 do I have the room? I don't think I do. Not me. I don't dislike it. What? Uh, what's your favorite song off of it? Um... Well, I don't know. Are there any songs on that album? <laughs> no, no. I, like, like that's one of those albums where like over half the record was on the radio. Yeah. It was. And what's it? Two hundred miles, two thousand miles. Like 2, that's possibly miles. my favorite one. That is a fantastic. That's song. a really fucking it's great, genuinely song. great song. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I like Ohio, and uh, yeah, I like I like. Oh, Ohio, I like. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, I, forgot, I like that. And and um, I keep wanting to say Middle of the Road, but that's the next album. Uh, I like I like Back on the Chain Gang. I hate that song. Yeah. That's a good Spoiler song. Spoiler alert! I yeah. can't stand it. But, um, all right, so number five, merely at number five. Which album here? Which album I have behind me is this going to be? Oh. <laughs> merely number merely five. Merely number five. <laughs> yes. What? Purple Rain, Prince. <sighs> That's racist. <laughs> <laughs> uh, this is going to be edit. Really? Take two. Oh, that's take, racist. That's not racist. <laughs> Prince I'm is kidding. not any one specific color. Well, Prince is every I mean, color. you know, it might be racist. <laughs> I mean, you color. don't know why I don't that. <laughs> See? I haven't discussed my reasons for putting it down. <laughs> oh, my God. Our friendship is over. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> I'm not going to discuss them here, but, you know. Oh, <laughs> no. It turns out Paul really just cannot stand purple people. That's what it is. That's what it is. Well, I, yeah, purple I'm no purple people, people either. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so number four. Oh, man. Number four. Purple people hater. <laughs> <laughs> Hating purple people. Well, either one eye, one horn. Oh. Van Halen jump, oh. number four. Oh. Really? Wow. Van Halen jump. What the fuck is wrong? <laughs> We're just starting. <laughs> This has not taken effect yet. And it's, you know. That's the best. Right. Van Halen yeah, with best. their album Jump. It's Jump by 1984. <laughs> yes, by, by the band 1984. <laughs> <laughs> I'll go check this out. Oh. oh, man. This is a sealed copy with the Jump uh, sticker. hype sticker. Oh. It also has the song title hype sticker. Oh. That. oh. How fucking cool is that? That's... How much would you pay for that? I'd I buy paid that $17. for a dollar. A do- what? I paid $17. 17 dollars 17 which where'd you get it you from? You can't get this shit with a ring wear for seventeen dollars. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Where'd you get it from? Uh, at a record store on Seventy Second Street, just a few blocks down over from the fucking Dakota. Really? Like oh. last year. Nice dude. What? Yeah. There's a record store around there? There is. That's crazy. I it's, paid a little, $1. it's a little secret weapon record store where you can oh find God. shit like that sealed I have for seventeen to go bucks. There. I'm gonna walk around there. Yeah. Hmm. All right. So nineteen uh, number three. Hmm. Number three. Look at the riding! Scorpions! Yes! Scorpions! Love a busting! <laughs> Big silly! Yeah. Big silly nice! Look at the riding! Yeah! 
Yeah, yeah. It's Scorpion's oh, love so for Sting. Great. Yeah. See, now, that's the funny thing, is that Love for Sting is the big M- Scorpion's MTV album, but I like it so much more than I like Stay Hungry. It's a better mix? It's a better It's a better record. Mm. I think. A lot, there are a lot of songs I like a lot more than a lot of songs. You could say there's more depth, there's more substance to the Scorpions record. Yes, I'll give you that. Yeah. I'll give yeah. you that. But, um, yeah, anyway, so Scorpion. Scorpion! 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 Number two, unfortunately an album that I don't have a copy here because I don't have a copy anymore. We talked. I did, said the same thing in the last episode for 83. Because Dumbass Me got rid of these records and now it's impossible to get another original copy. Metallica, Ride the Lightning. Ride the Lightning. Oh, man. Yeah. <laughs> Tommy. You can only get a repress of that. Yeah, yeah I mean, it's you're talking three figures now if you're going to buy That's big money. Say it, what? Yeah. If you're oh, buying yeah. an OG copy of any of these first three or four Metallica albums, three figures. Yeah. You've got to be kidding. Not even in no. particularly good condition. That's crazy talk. Every time I'm in a store, record store that has them, they're on the wall, 175, yeah. whatever. It's I'll tell you it's what, Crystal, nuts. it's not just those Metallica records. Any 80s metal in general, and I should actually clarify, um, not so much the glam metal records that sold huge numbers, but most of the other metal records... Because they got so trashed by most yeah. of the people that bought them, finding original copies now is almost impossible. Yeah. Finding a Merciful oh. Fate or... And they didn't sell in huge numbers to begin with. Yeah. But yeah, those Merciful Fate records, yeah. Stuff like Maiden or Priest is going to be like 25 30 bucks. Oh. You know, I saw a fucking Motley Crue Theater of Pain about a year or two ago for $50. That's ridiculous. Theater yeah. of Pain? Come on. That's ridiculous. That's a terrible album. Yeah. Wait a minute, doesn't it have at least one good song on it? Yes. Well, yeah, one. they haven't recorded it yet. <laughs> Is that the one? No. That's, that's the one with Home Sweet Home. No, oh, there's yeah, no yeah. good songs on that album. <laughs> but anyway, all right, so number one. Ooh. My number one. <laughs> Reckoning by R.E.M. I knew it. Yeah. yeah. Well, I, I mean, of course. It. I mean, I hadn't mentioned R.E.M. yet, and it's yeah. on the wall. I mean, what else? And it's you know. the 80s. Such Come. a Paul thing to say. Totally I know. Paul. Come on. Oh. Toast Paul. Oh, Bertolino. Oh, oh man. I'm, I'm Bertolino is all fuck. There's Bertolino all over the place now. <laughs> I'm Bertolino. Ew, it's Bertolino on my like a, a motherfucker. Bertolino AF. Yeah. AF. Yes. Bertolinoing AF. Okay. There you go. That is my list for 1984. Nicely done. I think we got through that in only 45 minutes. Yes. Wait, are we, oh, yeah. We have to. Keep, hold on. Are we doing this at the end of every. We yes, gotta, we no, are. We don't hold have on, to. Hold on, hold on. No, we no, don't no, have no. to. I, we're, we're doing this right here live on, on YouTube we're deciding, TV. We're deciding. I'm deciding. Oh, we're YouTube not clapping TV. at the end of everybody's segment. This you is know fucking ridiculous. That's an unsustainable tradition. I agree with you. <laughs> How is it unsustainable? <laughs> I totally agree with you. Because it's tiresome. No, yeah. it's not. The I people agree with like it. Yeah. The you know what? Don't no, like no, 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 no. Here's how we're doing this. How? It's at your discretion. You clap if you want. Don't clap if you don't want. You can clap if you want. You want to. Doesn't mean you have to clap. I just hate you. You can just go right to commercial. Shut up. <laughs> <laughs> you're going, you're proving, you've got to keep moving. Can't hold your back, you got it back, you're on the go. You're on the go, cause you know that you've got to show. You're on the go, cause you know that you've got to show. And, uh, well, I guess it's time for Tommy to talk about Tommy time. Yeah, I'm going to set you all straight real quick, like, so. Well. What? Oh, dear. Let's start with honorable mentions. Mm. So maybe mm. Crystal and I are going to have to go get a beer. And, I uh, think so, yeah. yeah. Fuckers, fuckers. <laughs> okay. I can be quick. Make a big wham! Heartbeat City, The Cars, Ride the Lightning, Metallica, Metal Queen, Lee Aaron, Power Slave, Iron Maiden, Self Control, Laura Branigan, Walpurgis Night, Storm Witch, The Warriors, Scandal. This is Spinal Tap by Spinal Tap. Run DMC, Self Titled, Building the Perfect Beast, Don Henley, Born in the USA, Bruce Springsteen, Let the Music Play, Shannon, Beach Street, Original Motion Picture Soundtrack. See, see that wasn't very long. I, see, oh, I was nice. expecting like a thirty album list here. 
No, 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 no. Yeah. Now, let's move this party right along to my okay. actual All right. top ten. This party. All right. Top ten. Ten. Nineteen eighty-four. Okay. Number ten. Madonna, like a virgin. I knew it. You got damn right. I'm you surprised knew it. it's a ten. Though. Yeah, I know. I was gonna say I that's, that's, that's just low. Gonna be that just low. wait, all right. All right, all right. Will ya? Just wait. It's gonna be also at the top. It's, it's gonna, gonna, gonna have to be number one. My number nine, Madonna, like a virgin. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's an that'd awesome be fucked up. Yeah, that would be really funny. <laughs> you know, it would be funny though. Yeah. No, my number nine actually is Chicago with Chicago seventeen. Mm. Oh yes. My well, love that's for, a top 10 album. My love for 80s Chicago knows no limits. And those of you who are uh, big fans of the show know that score. That's you right. know that score between me and Paul and him. Yep. Right. They know what's up. They know what's up. Well, know I think wrong. a lot of people who are fans of the show, though, know who yeah. Chicago actually is. Is, so, yes. So. The real Chicago. Oh, for fuck's sake. <laughs> Anyway, speaking of they know what's up, I'm about to explain to them what's up. My number eight, <laughs> Survivor with Vital Signs. Oh, damn. Uh-huh. Wow. Yup. Wow. What was what's the big up? hit off of that? I forget. <laughs> but he loves that album. It's I do. He likes that shit even more than he likes the Madonna album. Okay. Let me, all right. Even more than Chicago. Oh, okay. yeah. Even, even more than the synth band who called no, himself Chicago. No, Keep going. Keep no, going. You, no, you fuckers. No. It's the vital signs. Here we go. <laughs> You're calling him on his shit right I just want to know. Survivor. I just want to know. I just want to know. I just want to know. I just want to make you look stupid. No. Camera. She kind of assumes stupid. that it's in your I top can't hold list. back. High on you. First night. High the search you. is over. Ugh. Come on. High on Popular you. Popular girl. Yes. I got nothing. This album is amazing. Okay. Anyway, if there's no further interruptions. Tick a lock. <laughs> well, we got to somehow make your list 20 minutes long like mine was. You know, we have to make it a little bit Yeah, that's true. That's yeah. true. Or 20 minutes long like Crystal's runner up list. I! <laughs> I'm Crystal. I'm going to read off 500 albums that came out in 1984 and 10 that didn't, but I'm not aware they didn't come out that year. Here we go. <laughs> Everyone take a seat, grab a drink, and a sandwich. All right, my. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Well, well, he well. He just read me to the film. <laughs> All right. Hell, good night, everybody. <laughs> I'm even offended I now. Know, <laughs> 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 oh, so, Tommy. Shit. Hey, Chris. <laughs> Chris oh, is, gone. is he done yet? Oh, no, he's not done. Not done. Oh, oh. Right, let me get a glass. Right <laughs> oh, okay. Well, c continue. I'll keep going. <laughs> Greg continue. <laughs> Greg, Greg continue. <laughs> okay. My number seven, Dio, the last in line. Yes. yes. Ooh. Ooh. My God. Yes. Oh man. Oh. I know, dude. I know. The promo poster for that was. Oh, did you have that? Promo I had poster? that where it was the the op like because that wasn't a gatefold record, but the uh -huh. image does. Re the, the poster was as if it was a gatefold. Oh was the no whole way. Image. It was fucking awesome. That's amazing. I way don't have that anymore. No, that'd be hard to find, too. Yeah. All right, my number six. Scorpions! Ah! Love of Fasting! Scorpions! Ah! <laughs> <laughs> well, I've driven Crystal to day drinking now. Yeah. So <laughs> Oh, there's my straw. Oh, no. Crystal, you probably should have stayed out of the room for this next one. <clears throat> okay. <laughs> you don't have to ask her twice. Yep. <laughs> She's going to find out sooner or later. Yep. My number five, Brian Adams with Reckless. Oh. All right, Crystal, no, you can come racist. back. <laughs> <laughs> Crystal, it's safe to come back in. It is? Yes. Yeah, there's no further Canadian racist content. Yeah, the, the racism the racism is, is done it's now. Over. Yeah. Okay. My, my hatred yeah. of Prince for un, undisclosed reasons. Wowzy. Yeah. Wowza, wowza. Yeah. Wowza. yeah. <clears throat> yeah. All yeah. Right. It has unfortunately come to light. I think we've alluded to this before. It's come to light, I think, in recent years. For me, Crystal has oh. been hip to this for decades. That Brian Adams might not be the nicest person in the fucking world, but he does have some absolute bangers from the 80s. So it's one of those things where I, I have to mention, I think Reckless is a fantastic album, but he might not be an all right dude, unfortunately. He might not. Might not. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. He ain't. So. Mm -hmm. Next. Anyway. Next. <laughs> I just got nexted. Yeah. All right, next. Number four, Twisted Sisters. Stay hungry. Feel the fire. Yeah. Stay you know, hungry. there was a lot of feeling of the fire in the 80s. There, well, the fire there, had to be felt. There was a lot when, of fire. When, you, when it was the 80s, you had to feel the fire, 
Yep. It was generally in the night. <laughs> yep. You know. Oh, that's yep. right. You yeah. know. Yep. In the night. Yeah. Feeling the fire in the night. So, I mean, if you could do both things, I mean, that was good. then you've won the 80s, I believe. You've won the 80s. Yeah. You've won the 80s. <laughs> So, my number three, purple rain, purple rain. I am not oh, taking this off three. the wall again. Wow. I'm just going to no, 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 <laughs> off the wall was 1979. Yeah. 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 Oh, boy, we are here all week, guys. Oh, <laughs> yes. Unfortunately for you, we are. Don't forget to tip your waitress. <laughs> This, this right is over. what it's come to. <laughs> Our Vegas era has begun. Yes. I heard somebody We're say, uh, uh, tip the veal, try the waitresses or something like that. <laughs> tip the veal. That's old school. You're getting mm. full on Bob Hope on us now. Yeah. Oh, gosh, yeah. But anyway, number, my number three, Prince Purple Rain. I mean, there's not much I could really even say about that album. It's just genuinely incredible. It it's truly is. It's fucking amazing. It yeah. truly is. My number two, I have to clarify that my number two is the U.S. version, which is a different mix featuring a different, uh, featuring additional guitar parts by John Sykes, oh. who just joined the band. White Snake would slide it in. Oh, right, right, yes. right. Yes. Right. Ooh. Slide the second in. version is the better version. Yes, that's the U.S. mix. Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 It's it's just Definitely. more aggressive. It's heavier. And it's the earlier John one Sykes just sounds it. like the earlier record. Yeah. Yeah, you know, but kind it's of a little the, thin, kind of you know, not quite, not there. quite heavy, not ballsy. But yeah, the, yeah, yeah, but the yeah. U.S. mix, it's really more than a U.S. mix. It's a U.S. version because there's additional instrumentation. Um, it's 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 a killer, a killer Slide album. You know, down. I didn't mention it on my list, but it's the only White Snake album that I have any kind of time for. Oh, okay. Well, I mean, you're wrong. Anyway, my number one for 1984 is. Van Halen with 1984. Oh. Come on, people. And instead of 1984, I have this Jump album here that I'll show you. Oh, then. excellent. Oh, well. But, you know, you get the idea. It's got, the idea. We have Mammoth with Jump. Yes, Mammoth. <laughs> Mammoth 2 with Jump. Yeah. Oh, God. Yeah, fantastic, fantastic album. I know it was a very divisive, polarizing album for Van Halen fans back in the day, but when this album came out, I was five years old, so I was not polarized by it. The poli- the politics and the, the, the baggage of the time. All was that just, shit went right past me, yeah. didn't matter at all, and I just yeah. loved that. I love that record. I, I was really in the do. thick of the politics. I know, of this record. <laughs> I know. I'm glad you were able to get past that, though. Yeah. You know, a lot of people didn't, but. Well, yeah. Yeah. But that's me for 1980. For yeah, Tommy. Oh, I got snaps. Got Whoa, snap. I got what is this finger? Snap is, and clap. I don't even know what that is. It's you know. But you know what? It's I an like allowance. It. I find it a great honor. I'm just, you know. Yes. <laughs> it's something. Yes. I'm just going to allow a little bit of <clears throat> the sheer force of will that it must have taken Paul to even give me that much. Yeah. Well, I'll tell you what. He only mentioned one album out of all of that that I'm like, oh hell no. Which one? Which one? Shannon. Um, as, as if you couldn't have, I mean if, if you'd gone over that whole list couldn't you I have forgot. figured out that would be yeah, the yeah, one yeah. like dude that's a great record but he's not gonna be into that oh I am I am on it I know you are yeah. but that's not his steez that's his right. steez alright so okay. anyway I'll take extra steez perhaps we should go to a commercial let's mm. go to a moishal Crazy glue, strong enough to hold this man suspended in midair. Bonds almost anything. A plastic knob, a plastic plug, a rubber boot, a metal brooch, a fishing rod, a cycle grip, model planes and model trains, a doorknob screw, a flashlight case, the broken trim on any car. And crazy glue also comes in a no-drip, no-clog pen. The country's gone crazy. Crazy glue in tube or pen. Crazy glue. At Publix, True Value, Little General, Ace, and Eckerd Drug. All right, All right, now we are back, and it is time for okay. Crystal oh, to on. give us the list. Oh All right, Crystal. Okay. All right. Tell All right. us about your 1984 list. <laughs> give us the gist of your list. 
<laughs> or else we're going to get pissed. Does it contain any kiss? Ow! I suspect it does not. It does not I suspect contain it does any not. kiss. Oh, shit. All right. Here's my runner's up list. She's Strange and I Like It by Cameo. Sparkle on the Rain, Simple Minds. Into the Gap, Thompson Twins. Weird Al Yankovic in 3D, Weird Al oh, Yankovic. Wow. Declaration, The Alarm, Bananarama, Bananarama. History, Mystery, and Prophecy by Lee Scratch Perry. The Swing in Excess. Victory, The Jacksons. Victory. New Edition, New Edition. That album was big time, big important. Mr. Telephone Man, there's something wrong with my life. And also, what was the other big hit? Cool it now, you better slow it down, slow it down. Oh, I love that shit. Oh my God, so good. Uh, what You Get by P.I.L. Ice Cream Castle by The Time. Oh. Diamond Life, Sade. Double Nickels on the Dime, The Minutemen, Zen Arcade, Who's Du. The Red Hat Chili Peppers, Self-Titled. Mirror Moves, The Psychedelic Furs. Some Great Reward, Depeche Mode. Tonight, David Bowie, I Feel For You, Chaka Khan. Big Bang Boom, Hall & Oates. <laughs> You're out of touch. I'm out of time. Time! Going out of my head when you're not around. Uh, welcome to the Pleasure Dome. Frankie goes to Hollywood. Make it big. Wham! The Top, The Cure, Slip It In by Black Flag, one of the best songs ever, by the way. 1984, Van Halen, Let the Music Play by <laughs> Shannon. Ego Trip by Curtis Blow, featuring Basketball. Oh, so <laughs> stupid. Star Child by Tina Marie, Solid by Ashford and Simpson, Sparkle in the Rain, Simple Minds, On the Nile, The Egyptian Lover, who is oh, the... what? Egyptian lover. Yeah. Wow, that was, I did not see that shit coming. Oh, yeah, because he is the father of West Coast rap and hip-hop, Egyptian lover. Don't sleep on the Egyptian lover. Yeah, but you want to know, for me, Arabian Prince. They that's, were contemporaries. I think Arabian Prince, Arabian Prince stomps Egyptian lover it, to me. That's fine. It stomps it, but I, you know, like this is the first one, and it's really important because yes. if you listen to any Snoop Dogg, um, Dr. Dre, N.W.A., uh, to show anybody from West Coast rap, Ice T, this guy made the blueprint. The Egyptian Lover. The videos are ridiculously bad. <laughs> <laughs> but, now but that great. that much is true. That is true. Uh, it's My Life by Talk Talk and The Flat Earth by Thomas Dolby. And I had a really hard time not putting Thomas Dolby in my top ten. Yeah? Yeah. You managed. I managed. Good work. But he's really important to music. A lot of people right. think... Well, like we were talking about um, 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 Trevor... Trevor Horn. Horn. Trevor Horn. Yes. He's kind of like that sort of a character. He is. That guy, he basically yeah. created ringtones for telephones. Did you know that? I did not. That's a fact. Interesting. Yeah, he was talk about a gearhead, like a synthesizer, keyboard, computer gearhead. He he really he's really important to our lives. You oh. might not know that, but he really is. He invented oxygen, you know. He invented oxygen, you know. Wow. All right. So here is my list list. Oh, let's see. Hmm. All right. Uh, it's a secret. It's, it's a, a secret. secret. We shan't know it. No, you know what? I'm gonna I'm gonna scratch something. You're making an on the fly decision. I am. I am gonna put him at number ten. Oh. My, my top ten list: Thomas Dolby with the flat Earth. Okay. Well, then, did your number ten get knocked down to? No, I'm wiping it out. Oh, oh wow! Eliminating it. Whoa, I'm whoa, whoa! I'm it's not gonna become an honorable mention. No. Okay. We're just getting rid of it. All right. Okay. All right. Well, the, all right. The, the, the mystery shall never you can be solved. Do what you want. Fair is fair. I'm doing what I want. If you yeah. if you go down to our Patreon and 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 you know. If you if you contribute to our Patreon, you can find yes. out what the album was that she just eliminated. Fifty bucks, fifty bucks, fifty bucks a month, <clears throat> a month. If you go yes. to if you go to our <laughs> OnlyFans, you can find out yes. what album was. <laughs> what it was. She got. I'll be like Carly Simon. I'll auction it off <laughs> Ooh, for a big fee. Yeah, all proceeds benefit us, so we can pay our rent. All right, number nine, "Like a Virgin" by Madonna. Big, 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 important record. A lot of people don't like it because she was. That was her voice at the time. But, you know, it's important. I know she apparently got some shit for the way her vocals sounded, but I guess, again, because of my age, because I just... I, I didn't know to question it. I just... When I hear those old Madonna albums, I think her voice sounds great. It just sounds yeah. exactly what I, what I want to hear on that. Because she was even like that on the re other record. But yeah, I love it. Coming in at number eight is Stop Making Sense by Talking Heads, hmm. which is a movie soundtrack. 
Right. And it's a really great movie. And uh, that's when I, that was my first date with you, Jim Goad, when we were supposed to go see that movie. Oh, sorry. That was my first date with you, Jim Goad, and we didn't see the movie because you and your best friend, Brome, drove me up here to New York instead. Oh, Brome. Right. Classic Brome. Classic Brome. But that was the night that we saw David Johansson. Yeah, I was going to say, I have a feeling this is the Johansson story. It is, mm-hmm. yeah. That was the night we saw David Johansson as Buster Poindexter at... Oh, that was back in 84? Like $2, yeah. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, it was great. Uh, coming in at number seven, Tommy will love this, talk show by the Go-Go's. Hey. Hey. I'm surprised that wasn't on your list. it's not a very good album. Okay. Well. <laughs> it's got a couple of really good songs, but overall, I didn't really love the record. Yeah. I, I really liked it. More than you. How about that? Yeah. How about them apples? <laughs> Head over heels, where should I go? Can't stop myself out of control. Head over heels, no time to think. It's like the whole world's out of sync. Oh, that's so good. All right, number six Ocean Rain by Echo and the Bunnymen. That record is like a greatest hits record. Every song on it slaps, as the kids say. Well, like in a sense that every song you would hear on the radio or hear everywhere, or it's just because it's good. Um, well, no. Well, you didn't hear it on mainstream radio because it was new wave music, right? But was there an outlet or somewhere where oh, you yeah, would regularly yeah, yeah. hear pretty much all that all the shit? time on college radio mm. and in all the clubs? So this is 1984, and this is into my first year of college, and. I was working at Listening Booth Records at 16th and Chestnut across the street from where I went to college. So I had hundreds of records from that job because we got promos all the time and white labels and this and that. And so it was me, my friend Dorothy Orant Morrison and Tracy Wright, who disappeared off the face of the earth. I hope she's not dead. And so we would get all these records all the time. And I just literally every day I worked, I would bring home a bag full of records. It didn't matter what. That's how I discovered Fishbone. That's how I discovered tons of shit. And this record, like I knew of Echo and the Bunnymen because they were played on college radio, but you know, The Killing Moon was the biggest hit. Mm-hmm. Everybody knows that. But I never really... They they would play other songs, but once I got it and I started playing it, like, wow. Wow. It's really, really good record. <coughs> Number five, I've got Who's Afraid of the Art of Noise by The Art of Noise. Here's Trevor Horn. All right. Now, that record is really weird because it really literally is the art of noise. The first song is this weird horn section. It makes no sense and it lasts like 60 seconds. <laughs> what? <laughs> and you're listening like, I don't know what is going to happen, but then really good stuff happens. So check out that record if you haven't already. Coming in at number four is Private Dancer by Tina Turner. One of the most important records of the 80s. This was uh, what, the beginning of her big comeback, Private Dancer. No, I think that is 84. Oh, was it? I yeah. That's correct. Oh, I think I had it on my 80. I think I had it in the background for 83. Did you really? I know I had it. Okay, I'm sorry. I'm, no, that's fine. Yeah. Yeah, Private oh, well. Dancer, it's fucking great. And I was so happy that this happened with her, that she found her man yeah. and got this production. And because before, I think the, the single before this was when she did a cover of Let's Stay Together. Do you remember that? Yeah, I do. And the video was really good, too. And I just thought, wow, all right, this is a really great cover. What's going to happen next? And then this shit happened next. Yeah. Kaboom! Changed everything. <clears throat> yeah, you know, I remember when... Um I remember seeing on MTV, be like, "Oh, a new MTV, a new video from Tina Turner." I'm like, "Oh, Tina Turner!" Turner? Like, yeah. I hadn't heard from her since the fucking seventies. Right, and, and a lot they of people... played. What's love got to do with it? I remember seeing it for the first time, being like, and being like, "Oh, this is a pretty good song," but not thinking anything about it. I didn't think it would be a big hit. I didn't think like any of what was about to happen was going to happen. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you know, a lot of people wrote her off, but you know, she persevered. Yeah. All right, coming in at number three, I have "The Glamorous Life" by Sheila E. Which is a Prince record. Mm-hmm. Well, <laughs> so is Ice Cream Castle. Yes. And you're There's up a ones. lot of Prince records with other people on, on yeah. them. Yeah. He wrote and produced and played everything on it. And she Lee sang. And it was really great. And that single, A Glamorous Life, Stone Cold Jam. I played at every DJ gig where there's dancing <clears> involved. And everybody loves it. It's so good. The 12-inch single is even better because it's got... Oof, yeah, it's just great. Number two. On. Yeah, it's got a lot of stuff. Number two, I got Run DMC, their mm. self-titled album. Mm. 
with It's Like That and Sucker MCs, which had been played six or eight months prior as the singles. And then the album came out and it is phenomenal. So, uh, yeah, it was everywhere all the time. Everybody played it on their boom boxes walking down the street. It was great. Yeah, those first two Run DMC albums yeah. in particular are yes. really good. Really, really good. Yeah. Rick Rubin, mm. he's a nutbag. Mm. <laughs> I have feelings about Rick Rubin. I have a lot of feelings well, about him yeah. too. Well, you know, but but that doesn't make those Run DMC albums not good. Though. Not good. Yeah, but I just don't know how much I want to attribute to him. I'm oh, not saying well, it's yeah, all no. about him. Yeah, but by Mused, he was a a catalyst of sorts. Okay. Okay. Is that all right? Sure. I don't. I, I mean, Will how much? Judge how much? It? How much was Jam Master J involved though? Well, I mean, he was making the beats, so... So I feel I'd rather just attribute it to Jam Master J. Okay, that's yeah. fair. Okay, that's fine, that's fine. But coming in at number one for 1984 is... <laughs> Obviously, it's Purple Rain by Prince. Come the oh. fuck on. You have it that high, huh? Oh, yes. Oh, that little old record. How is that not going to be number one? I'm kidding. I, mean, I knew that. Yeah, like, we didn't <laughs> yeah. know that was going to be fucking Hello? number one. Hello? Come yeah. on. I... It changed everything. It kind of did, yeah. It that changed album. everything. It's astonishing. That it was, was so just, good. It was incredible. And I remember going to see it the day that it opened because it played at the Eric Movie Theater, also across the street from where I went to college. It was the record listening booth and then the, and then the movie theater. And the first show was at 12 noon, and I went with five friends. We cut class. I'm glad my parents are. Oh shit! Didn't hear that? That was probably the first time I ever cut class. I, but it was yeah, statute of limitations has run out. On okay, yeah. yeah, I cut class. Fuck you. <laughs> and uh, so we went to see it, and we nobody knew what to expect. Nobody knew what was going to happen. It was a packed theater, and they were all Prince fans. And we sat in there, and it you know it unfolded. And at the end of it, everybody was literally stunned. Nobody knew what to say or do. And then somebody jumped up and started clapping, and then we all jumped up and started clapping. And then I stayed there until 2 o'clock in the morning. <laughs> to, to watch it again? To watch it again. Yeah, yeah. Damn. I watched it like six times that day, and every time it got better and better. Just, oh, man. So fucking well, well, yeah, back now, those were the days when you could go into a theater, watch a movie, and go, eh, I'm just gonna stay. Say. <laughs> <laughs> we used to do that in the, in the 70s and the early the 80s. Yeah, you just do yeah. that, and nobody. Nobody gave a shit. Yeah. The kids would come in and sweep up the popcorn and the garbage, and they just like, they mm, didn't whatever. Didn't say yeah. a word. They I didn't never, care. I never got to experience this. And if there was a theater where they did have, you know, a security guard to kick everybody, everybody get out, get out, then you just go to the bathroom. Yeah, oh. and then hold your tickets up and then just go in. back in. It was easy as pie to it was do it. So I mean, it simple. wasn't even a matter of people not caring. Caring, right? yeah. Like you just, it was just easy it to just, do it. It was. Yeah. It just was. Yeah. So yes, yeah, so I saw it from noon until two in the morning. Damn. Yeah, I couldn't get enough of it. Like I saw it ten times after that. It was so great. It's so fucking good. Yeah. All right. That's my number one. So there's Crystal's list from 1984. Yay me! Yeah, yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> because he refuses to clap, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah, yeah, we've decided no clapping. Yeah. Tommy has decided this, yes. and I'm gonna, I'm going with it. I'm in no clapping zone over here. Go ahead, abide by Tommy. However, yay, abide however, by him. I am actually going to mm. step out, become a renegade for one moment, because we do have a commercial. Yeah. <laughs> Turn it on. Leave it on. America, see the music you want to see. I want my MTV. I want my MTV. I want my MTV. 24 hours a day on cable TV. In stereo. Interviews. DJ. Your day. World premiere video schedule. Music news. I want my MTV. 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 Yeah, too much is never enough. <laughs> It's thrilling. You can't beat it. It's the magic of Michael Jackson. It's page after page of color photos and facts about the most exciting star today. Read about the public Michael, the private Michael. It's hot. It's awesome. That's just half of this incredible offer. Call this 800 number, use your credit card, and you'll also get the book Papa Joe's Boys, The Jackson Story. See hundreds of intimate photos of Michael, his brothers, and family. Wow. Michael's always been adorable. 
These are the same bestsellers you saw advertised in Tiger Beat and Right On magazines. They're a $13.40 value. But for this TV offer, they're $9.95 plus $2 postage and handling. Call now and we'll rush your books to you. The Magic of Michael Jackson plus Papa Joe's Boys, both just $9.95. Use the phone for credit card orders only or mail your check or money order to this address. I love you, Michael. All that yapping, and then we have clapping. <laughs> all right. Well, all right. Welcome all back. Right. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Now with the best part, oh, hating 1984. Hate. Hate. Here comes the hate. All right. This what this is what everyone tunes in for. Especially now. We, Especially oh, another one in the 80s. Especially not. No. Oh, okay. Fine. All right. If that's how you're gonna play it, go ahead. Go ahead, <laughs> Bertolino. Go ahead, Paul. Embarrass yourself. Start it off. Oh, oh shit. <laughs> I have a feeling. Actually, I don't even remember what I even have on this list. Let's see. <laughs> Shit gets real at some point, it's but let's see. It's going to be good. It's going to be good. Um, no, I don't have that much, but I have, I have some good shit. Okay. Please pay attention to Tommy's face. <laughs> okay. Well, I have four runners up. Mm. And oh, I think they're a little out of order. I have to decide what the top one is. But I have four runners up and a worst of the year. Mm. Tonight by David Bowie. Oh. Oh, fuck that fucking album. Are you kidding me? That's terrible. <laughs> I the knew best it. song on that record is Blue Jean, and that song sucks. I hate that song, yeah. Yeah, come on. <laughs> that is like the, the fucking. I know, I know. Yeah. Go ahead, next. I mean, okay. Um. Chicago 17. Yeah. Are you fucking kidding me? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That yes. album is fucking. I, I fucking hate that record. I, I, I'm not even going to say it's terrible. Obje I fucking hate that record so much. You're fucking demented. And along comes a woman. That's a great song. Oh, yeah. In some alternate universe. Oh. And a change in the way that you're feeling tonight. Thanks, Paul. I'll tell you how I'm feeling tonight, and that song <laughs> that sucks. Song That's how I'm feeling. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, I, really, I actually really like Peter Cetera's voice. Yeah. But I... Too much Cetera singing on one album. Too much. It's a bit much. And I really cannot stand... Like, the, the fucking Space. production of these records, these they're just so fucking... It's David just, Foster's production. Yeah. Yeah, oh, thank you. Exactly. I need Foster. I say more. Yeah, yeah, that's all you need to say. Is that yeah, David it's just Foster. so the end. sterile and just fucking calculated. And elevator, just, elevator. And, yeah, elevator. Just like, oh, God. Anyway, Chicago 17. Uh, now, wait. Actually, you know what? I will say, I like Stay the Night. Yeah? Stay the Night good. actually is a good song. Mm, okay. I fucking hate all the rest of that shit, though. Congratulations. Moving on. All right. <laughs> well, come on. Nobody's going to... I'm going to get no pushback on this next okay. one. I can't imagine. All right. But do let me know if, if, uh, if I'm wrong. Julio Iglesias with 1100 Bell Air Place. Oh, jeez. Yeah. <laughs> You're not going to get any pushback from me. Zero pushback. Yeah, I mean, it's kind of, yeah. it sounds like it's more of a non-entity, really. It's really not an entity. Yeah, yeah. I'm a man, yeah I, I forgot all about it. Yeah, it's, not, it's not on my radar. Yeah. It's forgettable, but it's also really terrible. Terrible. First Red Hot Chili Peppers album. Red Hot Chili Peppers can go fuck themselves all the way back to the first album. Yes, true men indeed, don't they can. Kill coyotes. Yeah, yeah, is yeah just, true men That is not a good band. Red Hot Chili Peppers. All right, so, but my worst of the year. Mm-hmm. Mm my worst of the year. Mm. Oh. I don't know. You you guys may or may not know about this record, but I hope you do. This is an album called We Reserve the Right oh, no. by a band called oh, no. Madam X. Oh. No. oh, my God. Oh, please don't tell okay. me you love that album. All right. So all high right. in high school. Okay, oh, no, come not on. high in high school, but all right. Come on. Come, come on. on. We're, We're going to have a ball. ball. the fucking We're seven dwarfs. Hi ho. Today. It's hi ho, hi ho. Come by the seven on, dwarfs. everyone. And let's go. Okay. All right. It's all absolutely right. ridiculous. Okay. It's embarrassing. It, okay. It is. Okay. Technically, it is a terrible album, but yeah. it is still a fun album, even though I admit it's a terrible album. But, okay. Maxine and Roxy Petrucci are fucking amazing. Maxine was the guitarist. Roxy was the drummer. And she eventually went on to be the drummer in Vixen. They are ferocious on that record. Well, yeah. <laughs> they can play. They can play well all they want, but I mean, yeah. you know. Did you know? Actually, you, you know. So after, Jared, go ahead. The Grateful ahead. Dead are really great musicians too. Just saying. Okay, but just okay. saying. So interesting. So shut up. So interesting. Fun fact. <laughs> yeah, just saying. It's, fun fact. After, after Brett Kaiser, the singer, left Madam X. 
they replaced him with an 18-year-old Sebastian Bach. Good lord. Free Skid Row. I and look where that got them. Oh. That's it. You remember okay. that album with him on vocals? Remember that big hit album? No, they never cut a record with him. Okay. Anyway, anyway, probably a good thing because, you know, yeah, come on, come all, we're going to have a ball. I do like come on, come on. That is a I fucking terrible... I, you know, we're talking... I was in the thick of, of loving metal and being receptive to almost anything just like that. <laughs> and at the time, I was like hanging... I was just like covering my eyes in embarrassment <laughs> with this record. Have you heard this shit? Oh, I've heard it. Oh, yeah. And the cover pr- is hilarious, too, but oh, that's one of the like he's where the album cover is really embarrassing. Yeah. yeah, we played it at work because it was like... Took it out of the box. What the fuck is this? Y'all are high in high school. Our high in high school is a really bad song. Yeah. Was, and then after that is a bunch of bad songs. Okay. Yeah, that's my worst of the year. And, but, well, I, I should say, though, it's my worst of the year, but with a little bit of... There's a certain twinge of irony, because I always did kind of enjoy it in a... Morbid curiosity way? Well, no, it's just kind of funny. Oh. It's like it's kind of bad, funny, bad. The Madame X like Burn, record? Like Burn Bitch Burn from the Kiss album. Well, that's what I'm saying. It's not a good album. It's it's a it's a bad album, but it's still, I find it fun. Yeah. Well, anyway. Okay. That's my list. That's Paul's list. But my 80s list will get even better as we go along, though. I will say that. <laughs> Done with you. Over to me. <laughs> Let's get to some important stuff. <laughs> Dishonorable mentions. Uh-huh. Obviously, Hail to England by Man o War. Oh, obviously. Obviously, Sign of the Hammer by Man o War. <laughs> How many albums they put out? There? Anything, Anything by, by Man, Man o War. <laughs> I think they put out so many goddamn. They're all so bad. How were they allowed to make records? I, at one point, they well, started their own label, I think. Uh, Madam X was allowed to make records. I uh, to make record. Spicy. <clears throat> they only did make one record, yeah. <laughs> oh. Man o War made several albums a year, it seemed. <laughs> yeah, I don't damn. know. They have a huge following with people who just, I don't know. I'm, you know, I'm not going to even go down that road. Uh, okay, also, Sonic Death by Sonic Youth. Anything by, by Sonic, Sonic Youth. Youth. It gets a no boy from me. But my actual worst of the year. Now, I'm going to preface this one the same way you prefaced yours. You might not know this one. I, I might not. You might not know I, this I, one. Well, I'm glad that you guys did know that, though. Yes, that one I was very yeah. familiar with. But this one you might not know. Maybe you're aware of its existence. And that is... President Ronald Reagan reads stories from the Old Testament. Testament yeah. Oh, wow. No, I did not know about <laughs> I this. Do you know that. You know how you know that, I, that I didn't know this? Because it wasn't on my fucking list. <laughs> That's how you know. Crystal, if you hurriedly add that to your list, I would not fault you for no, it. No, no, no. Yeah. <laughs> Spoiler alert. It's on my list. Oh, I didn't let you. <laughs> I don't know how I missed this. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. I feel a little kind of lucky. Yeah. You should feel lucky. I mean, I knew about it because it came in at work. Right. Well, yeah. I worked at the record I mean, store. Otherwise, I wouldn't have known about it. I can it. see how that would catch people's attention on the day it arrived in the box. What the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> right out the window. <laughs> I think we actually set fire to one of them. I have to call as it, it should be. Yeah, as it should be. That, that so, record's existence alone is racist. I mean, yes, it is. <laughs> but over to you, Crystal. Ronald Reagan, a piece of shit. All right, so here is my crap. My crap list. <laughs> crap. Crap on. Crap, crap on. Whoa, whoa. So the aforementioned Ronald Reagan piece of shit is one of them. <laughs> then I've got. Uh, oh boy. The Smiths. Anything by the Smiths. Anything by the Smiths, huh? Hat Full of Hollow. Even How Soon Is Now? I don't give a fuck. Okay? I will say this. How Soon Is Now was a huge hit, which I'm sure everybody remembers. That's all they know. when I was in college, we would go to the East Side Club. We would go to the Kennel Club, where we would dance, because we were new wave weirdos. And we would dance to those songs. And I remember dancing to that song and not liking it. But everybody else was so into it. And I was just like, oh, this is no good. And I went to the bar and got a drink instead and let it let the guy play it out. Mm. Um, yeah, I can't stand the Smiths. Johnny Marr is a great guitar player, but primarily because of that mopey motherfucker Morrissey. Out of the bat, out of the gate, he's a pain in the ass. Yeah. And I've, he's always been a problem. contrary and a big problem and a dickhead. And I guess not their last, not his last tour, but within the last five years when he was coming here to New York he essentially made a demand that every concession had to be vegan 
Oh, I heard Remember about that? this shit. Yeah. And yeah. I thought, who the fuck do you think you are, Morrissey? First of all, you're going to demand that for your whole tour, wherever you play. It All the concessions have to be vegan. Carrot juice, salads, whatever the fuck you wanted to do. Yeah. But you come to New York and you think you're going to fuck with the Teamsters Union? I don't think so. And they squash that like a bug instantaneously. Right. They're like, fuck you, you're not playing MSG then. <laughs> Basically. Yeah, see now, the fuck out of here. <laughs> Paul McCartney does that on tour for the people in his band. band. But the well, audience, not the do. audience. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. But the logistics involved in changing all the concessions in Madison Square Garden? Yeah. Are you crazy? Yeah. What the yeah. fuck? Ah, uh, fuck that guy. I can't stand him. Yeah, this, this, yeah, he's a prick. He's a yeah. dickhead. Uh, I also have 99 Luft Balloons. Oh, my oh, nana. Yeah. 99. That is the name of the album and that horrible song. Do, 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 do. It's one of the worst earworms ever in existence. Then I've got Legend by Bob Marley and the Whalers. <laughs> now, I know we're not supposed to be using comps on this, on these lists, but I have to include this because it is the, it became the record for white folks who didn't know anything about reggae to sink their claws into and swear like they're hip and with it. it yes. It's the bro reggae album. Yes, yes it's it the is. bro reggae. Right, thank you. It's, it's the bro, bro reggae It became album. the only, the de facto only Bob Marley Ma album. That's that it. Yeah. You know, yeah. and just like you go to any college, any university, and in the dorm room they always had like a, a Klimt poster. <laughs> <laughs> the kiss and they all had legend yep. and that was their excuse to smoke weed yeah they would have legend and they would have uh, they'd have the Che, che yeah. yes yeah. the Che yes, it's all the standard che. issue I think yeah. they give them to you in an open enrollment basically and, yeah. yeah college because uh, my roommate Diane and I and Val and Sandy and Tony well not Tony but we would go to parties at Penn University of Pennsylvania and at Temple and just crash their parties and destroy them but they all those white dudes they all had the Klimt poster they had the same legend poster and they would come to me oh hey Bob Marley you did yes I'm black I like Bob Marley I get it it was fucking annoying. Then I've got Go Insane by Lindsey Buckingham <laughs> which I talked about before yeah Lindsay, Lindsay, Lindsay. There was some foreshadowing that was coming. I mean, yeah, wow. we kind of saw that coming. Yeah. yeah, we saw that coming, right? He, he's, he, uh, mm -hmm. just his name works my nerves. <laughs> well, his name reeks of privilege. Yes, it is very elitist. Yeah, Lindsay, fuck you. Then I've got "Suddenly" by Billy Ocean. Oh, really? Yes, because wow. it features the big hit what? Caribbean <laughs> Queen. Oh, oh. What you done in the same dreams? Now, oh, wait a second. No. His 84 album, one. his 86 album, and his 88 album. Also. I fucking celebrate all three of those records. Okay. All three of those Billy Ocean records you can kick do that. fucking ass. That's fine. You are wrong. No, I'm not. Yes, you are. You know, no, I'm not. There's something about Billy Ocean. I don't yes, you like are. his I don't like his songs. I don't like his music. But I just I just like him for something. There's something about his vibe. Like he I is, like I like him for some reason. Yeah, he's a nice dude. <laughs> But I mean, don't don't let me interrupt your party. It's gonna turn into that that screaming ladies and cat meme. <laughs> yeah, Crystal's over there like, and I'm like, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> exactly. Just, all you need is fall over on your shoulder, like wise. holding you back, like just. <laughs> <laughs> totally, yeah. Oh my god, so awful. And then uh, I guess the worst of the lot would be, Valette. By Julian Lennon. Oh, a lot by Vallot. Julian Lennon. I was yeah. disappointed by that album. Now I, but here's the thing for me. So you are the son of a legend. You're the first son of a legend, and you had somewhat of a difficult childhood. That's cool. I hope you went to therapy. People are expecting something from you, especially if they see you in a photograph with a guitar in your hand. Oh, he's going to be the next John, Le John Lennon. This is going to be great. Oh, he's going to be, oh, his father's John Lennon, his father's John Lennon, his father's John Lennon, his father's John Lennon. I can't even begin to imagine that kind of pressure yeah. that everybody is pointing at you and aiming at you and assuming that you're going to be just as amazing as your father, which is so unbelievably unfair. And unrealistic. And, and unrealistic and damaging. So I feel as though solely on seeing interviews with him when this record came out, 
he always seemed like he just wanted to disappear. Mm. Do you remember these interviews? Like uh, sort of. He didn't. He wasn't very outgoing. CBS Saturday Morning and whatever. Whoever was interviewing him, he was just like, mm-hmm, uh huh. I mean, he was literally like shrinking. He was in probably his chair. scared shitless scared because he knew what he was. He knew everything you just said. Yeah. Yeah. So unfair. So, but regardless or slash irregardless, this record is not good. And that single, I can't stand it. The the title the title the track. title track. You know, I, I always liked so, that song. I can see why you like it. I totally get it, and I, you know, the string, and whatever, I just can't. I can't with that. Yeah, but I, I don't like any of the, like, Too Late for Goodbyes. Goodbyes, yeah. I really like that yeah, one. Yeah, I don't like any of the other I like stuff. that one a lot. I might have known. I would have put money that you would yes, like that one. Yes, I really like that but one. But a lot, I like that song. I know that it's not really a great song. I just like it. Hmm. Yeah, I yeah. feel bad for him. Well, you know what? Oh, I felt bad for him. Well, like before that album came out, I remember listen, I was listening to the radio one day, you know, the rock station. <laughs> and they were like, all right. So we they, they announced they had a song from Julian Lennon. And like, I didn't even know this was coming. It was yeah. like out of the blue. It was announced right. on the radio. And they played the lot. And just I sat and I listened to it. And his voice was a little Lennon-ish. And he kind of, you know, it's uh, as a song, as a composition, it as was a production, Lennon. it's Lennon light. Yeah. But it was kind of spooky to listen to. And I think that moment and that experience of hearing it for the first time kind of made me always have a soft Soft spot for the track. Okay, that's fine. That's fine. And it was was like a bomb dropping because there wasn't any pre-press for it. Nobody said anything. It was just like, boom, here Here it it is. is. A lot. And people, oh, you know, kind of taken aback. And then everybody was all over him. And uh, I felt bad for him during that time period. Seriously. I felt really bad because that is just so much pressure. And then if anybody who pans it, then you're like ready to jump out of a window, you know? Right. It's just awful. Yeah, it, that's a no-win situation yeah. he entered into. It's terrible. Just so because just kinda, he was born, yeah. it's a no-win situation, which is not fair. But I still hate the record. So that's it. That's my hate list. Well, all right. That's that's our hates. All right. right. Hated it. Well, all right. All right. Well, I guess that is that. Let's. Uh, I think we probably have some commercials here. Are there any more Slim Whitman commercials? Oh. Unfortunately, I don't, I don't know. We'll see. I don't know. We'll see. Let's see how this pans out. I hope so. You know the place to go for shirts and tops. But that's what we've got. Stop right. That's what we've got. We've got the best. That's what we've got. Just shirts. The spring sale. That's what we've got. James the Baron spring styles. Now 25% off. Sergio Valente tops. Now 25% off. Improvised shirts as low as $9.99. Great styles. Great prices. That's what we've got. Just shirts. We've got the best. That's what we've got. Just shirts. It's no. just photos, a series of photos. Hi, everybody. Oh, hey. hey. We're discussing commercials past. Yes. Um, the, but ghost the, past. Ghost the ghost of commercials past. Yeah, yes, yeah, the, the ghost, ghost of commercials, of commercials past. Uh, all right. Well, it's. I think it's time to get out of here, but um, but before we do, yes, we probably should have a little bit of uh, oh. uh, vintage oh. photo time. Oh. Woo. All right, so here's Crystal while she was in college at the Art Institute of Philadelphia. She's at the ATM pulling out a 10 so she can get drunk that night. Remember when you could pull 10 out at the ATM? All right, and here is me with my sister Rochelle, uh, my freshman year of high school in 1984. This is obviously December 1984, very late in the year. Proudly rocking my ACDC Flick of the Switch t-shirt. And here we have Tommy, six-year-old Tommy, blazing some 1984 action at the Sears Photo Studio, displaying all the hallmarks of a good and proper Chicago 17 fan. Yeah. Anyway, so uh, there you go. That is Crystal and me and Tommy in 1984. All right, there you go. Uh, There's yeah. us in 1984. Weren't we cool? Yeah, we were the baddest, man. You know it. We were, we were <laughs> awesome. Totally awesome. So weird. All right. All right. Thank you, everybody. Uh, thank you, everybody, for coming along. Um, I have no idea how long this episode is. It's probably kind of long because we've it's got fucking awesome. Yeah. It's gold, baby. Gold. Gold. Thank you for watching. Okay. Thank you for subscribing. Unless you haven't subscribed, well then, no thank you. Get on it. <laughs> no thank you. But, you know, you could always subscribe. Yes. And that would then win our thank yous. Uh, but if you do, be sure and click the little bell. Right. Notifications. And comment and all that kind of shit. And uh, but come back next week. Because, oh man, 
I'm sorry to tell you, is going to be 1985, <laughs> and that ain't no jive. All right, it's Tom, all Tommy, go down Tommy's here live. It. Yeah. All right. See you guys next week. Bye. <laughs> We're doing this. Yeah. It's really happening. <clears throat> it's really happening. We've it's dreamt really about happening. it. It's all happening. For a, we've dreamt about this for like a couple weeks now. I mean, so I have. Not th- we thought it would, the day would never come. Yeah. Oh, my God. Yes, we're here. We are in the thick of the 80s, the high 80s. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you notice. The high 80s. We, we do, we just get into the 80s during the last session. Yeah. Our last thing that we shot was 83. Yes. And then the very next session is 84 through 88. Half an hour later, Tommy's like, okay, so you guys want to shoot on this date? <laughs> Like that's the one time he comes when, when he comes in gets really proactive about getting oh, the next yeah, shoot in. That's right. Well, because we gotta get shit done, man. This is important shit here. Yeah. Now let's see what my mood is when we're shooting. Yeah, when we're doing 1997. <laughs> let's see if we get an yeah. instant text from like, Tommy going, "All right, guys, like, I don't feel I'm good like, today." I'm available guys. maybe next March sometime. <laughs> yeah, 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 exactly. <laughs> I gotta stay home. I have my doctor's note. I gotta write some albums from 1997 that I like. I don't know. Yeah, it's gonna yeah. take you that long to Good come up with anything. That. All right, now okay. here we go. Well, three, two, one. We're well, all right. Right.